So, this is uh, module 3. Now, what you looked at so far is uh, um, uh, if you have uh, uh, collateral particles in a fluid, if you add polymers to it, okay, we looked at uh, you know what are the consequences that means some applications where you know such a thing would happen. Plus, we have discussed about different states okay, or the state diagram. Okay, of the different diagram of the different states that you know um, form when you mix uh, colloidal dispersions and, and polymers, and we have uh, briefly talked about uh, uh, different parameters. Okay, that would affect the the behavior of colloid polymer mixtures, and then we went on to talk about some specific aspects um, such as um, bridging flocculation. Okay, and what are called as steric effects. Okay, and we just said that in general, addition of a polymer can both stabilize as well as destabilize a colloidal dispersion. Okay, that's what we have done so far. Right. Um, we'll continue further with um, um, <coughs> an important concept called. Uh, depletion flocculation. Okay. Um, depletion flocculation uh, can occur at moderate to high polymer concentration. That means you know, I, have, I have a dispersion of particles and I have added polymers, and if the concentration of the polymers is moderate to high, again moderate and high are very general terms, right? Depend it, it depends on the type of particle polymer system that you are dealing with. Okay. And uh, I am going to read out what is written here and then I ex explain later. The free polymer chains in the solution begin to. So, if you look at this particular cartoon, right, uh, what is shown here is particle 1 and particle 2, and this dark region that you see, right, this is the polymer that is adsorbed. Okay, that is the adsorbed polymer. Okay. When the particles are very close to each other, okay, that is at surface to surface distance less than or equal to approximately the radius of gyration or the size of the particles, size of the polymers. Okay. Then what happens is the polymer chains okay, are excluded Okay, from the region between the two particles. Okay, that results in something called as a depletion flocculation. Okay, this is a basically a cartoon. Okay, so uh, what is shown here is particle one and particle two. Okay, and uh, there's a dashed line, right? Um, the dashed line, uh, the size of that dashed line. Is it's what is called as a depletion layer. Okay, I'll talk a little bit about it later. Okay, and the size of the dashed line is actually half the the size of the the polymer. Okay, now if you look at the picture one, okay, that's uh, this one. Okay, you see that on an average, on an average, there is the same number of polymer neighbors that particle two has. And the similar number of neighbors will be there for particle one as well. Okay, now the other images that are shown are what happens if the particles approach each other. Okay, now this is a case where you know these these dashed lines exactly touch. Okay, and I said that you know the typical size of this dashed line, which is also called as a depletion layer, is half the size of the polymer. So, in this configuration, the polymer molecules still have access to the, the gap between the particles. Okay. Now, the next picture that is number 3 here, it shows a case where the distance between the two particles is smaller than the size of the polymer molecules. Okay. What will happen then? 
these polymers can no longer be in the gap between the particles they move out of the gap okay and so if you look at this region this is what is called a, a depletion volume okay and if you compare this and this the depletion volume in figure 4 is larger than the the depletion volume in figure 3 okay now what happens when the polymers move out of the gap is basically explained in this particular picture so you get what is called a, a depletion zone and this depletion zone is a zone between the two particles which is depleted of polymer molecules right now we defined uh, something called as a osmotic pressure force i don't know if you remember osmotic pressure force uh, f osmotic we defined it as number density of the particles multiplied by kbt right this number density is number per unit volume this was defined for particles but i can define the same thing also for the the polymer molecules as well right now if i look at the osmotic pressure in the region between the two particles because there are no polymer molecules there the osmotic pressure there is going to be zero okay however on the region the region outside the you know uh, particles you have enough number of polymer molecules there is going to be th therefore there your osmotic pressure force is going to be finite okay but however now you have the imbalance in the osmotic pressure right the osmotic pressure here is lower the osmotic pressure you know is higher there okay because of this imbalance in the osmotic pressure the particles are essentially pushed together okay that leads to what is called as that leads to what is called as depletion flocculation okay so the origin of depletion flocculation is re related to the formation of depletion zone and the creation of depletion zone leads to the osmotic pressure imbalance okay and this excess pressure okay the, what the, the arrows that you see here these arrows essentially show you the the way these excess pressure is going to act that's what would bring the the particles together okay now the schematic that you have shown right this is actually a schematic picture for colloidal spheres okay these are the particles right and they are in a, a solution with non adsorbing polymer okay in this case the particles so the polymer continues to remain in the solution they are non adsorbing so therefore a mixture of particles plus non adsorbing polymer will exhibit depletion effects that's number 1 number 2 you could also have a case when when you know what the, that's what is de depicted here you could also have a case where initially the polymer continues to adsorb onto the particle surface and then when the polym when the particle surface is saturated with the polymer then the depletion can kick in okay depletion can also be seen in cases where i have particle plus adsorbing polymers as well only difference between the two would be that in the case of particle plus adsorbing polymer you know combination the depletion effects will obviously occur at a much higher polymer concentration than what would happen for the particle plus non adsorbing polymer case right that's number 2 so i just want to write down again so the depletion effects can be observed in particles plus non adsorbing polymer case okay number 2 particle plus adsorbing polymer case can you think of other cases where the the depletion can occur so if you go back and look at 
the way uh, we talked about again one of the criteria for depletion to occur is that q which is defined as size of the polymer divided by size of the the particle should be less than 1 okay that's the condition under which the depletion interactions be would become important okay can you think of other systems where i can have a similar anal analog so you could have a case the third case is where i have a solution which contains large particles okay say that they are negatively charged okay now and a, and a combination of very small particles a, a colloid particle colloidal particle plus nanoparticle mixture where the the particles both the particles are similarly charged can also exhibit depletion interactions okay that's the third system a particle particle combination okay can also you know a similar phenomena about you know the particles not having access to the region between the particles can also occur in the case where you have a combination of large size particles and a small size particle okay and the fourth combination where this could happen is a system where i have particle plus micelles okay we know that typically micelles okay are the structures which are formed because of self assembly of surfactant molecules and typical size of my micelles will be very very small right of course it depends on the kind of surfactant that you're dealing with imagine that you know i have like say sds right sodium dodecyl sulfate now um, sodium dodecyl sulfate the the surfactant molecule is negatively charged right now if i have a a micelle that is formed because of sds it looks something like this okay the micelles would be negatively charged because the head group is negatively charged right and i have this in combination with large particles which are also negatively charged right when you have a combination like this you can also people have done experiments and shown that the depletion effects can also occur in the case of particle surfactant combination in which both the particle and the surfactant structures or the micelles will be of similar charge okay so these are the four instances where you can think about uh, depletion um, interactions again this is just a, a schematic which tells you about um, the depletion volume right if you have a case where the particles are really far apart your depletion volume is zero as soon as the the overlap occurs you're going to have this lens like region in the case of spherical particles and if you as long as if you so this the volume of this lens okay is what is called as a depletion volume okay and of course that will depend on the the separation distance right now so this is a <coughs> just like uh, we wrote uh, leonard jones potential right i mean uh, we have, we know how to right if your your phi is a function of separation distance okay so we said you know leonard jones is going to have one you know contribution because of repulsion another contribution because of attraction you know we wrote this overall potential and stuff like that right now similarly uh, people have kind of developed um, the in, you know if you have co colloidal particles immersed in a pool of uh, polymers uh, people talk about um, depletion interactions and the depletion interaction expression is given by this okay so we'll try and derive it a little later so what does this tell you okay so in this case 2 delta is the delta is the half so let's go back uh, this case okay now for any distance for any distance that is larger than 2 times rg of the polymers okay that means the gap between the two particles is you know big enough for the polymers to be there right for, for any distance greater than 2 times rg the polymers will have access to the the region between the particles 
that means the osmotic pressure imbalance is not set in the osmotic pressure in both the regions are the same okay for such a case your interaction the w depletion okay where h is a separation distance now is going to be zero right for any distance that is greater than 2 times the rg of the polymer okay or 2 times delta in this case the depletion forces are going to be not there okay that's zero okay now for any distance of separation that is less than zero okay your w depletion is going to be infinite that is very similar to the repulsion between the electron clouds right of the particles uh, i mean this so this is not a practical situation right i mean you really won't have any situation where you know your you know is going to be less than zero right um, how about this this is the the separation distance going from zero to 2 times delta 2 times delta essentially corresponds to when these two overlap right when the when these two overlap that's zero okay when when the particles are again sufficiently close like now i have something like this right i'm going to draw another one which is actually touching right that's the closest that they can, they can go right that's h is equal to zero okay that is h is equal to zero all the way going to 2 times delta the depletion interaction is given by p times v overlap v overlap is the overlap volume okay and p is the osmotic pressure okay p is the the osmotic pressure which is determined by the the concentration of polymer that you have in the the solution okay and you know people have worked out what this overlap volume would look like of course it's a function of h okay um, overlap volume in the k this is a this is a lens right okay if you look at this it looks like a lens okay and i there are ways by which i can calculate what is the volume of the lens okay as h changes that is the distance of separation changes and it turns out that it's given by pi by 6 2 times delta minus h whole square multiplied by 3 times r plus 2 delta plus h by 2 where r is a, the size of the particle 2 delta is the size of the hmm, polymer that you have and h is the separation distance okay um okay so if you plot this expression okay if you plot this expression it would look something like this okay it will it looks something like this um w of h where h is the separation distance it scale with um, kbt okay thermal energy okay this is the point where h is equal to 2 times delta any distance beyond that okay the interaction potential is zero okay and it is attractive in the range from h is equal to 0 to h is equal to 2 delta and h is equal to 0 you have a spike that corresponds to w of h divided by kbt being equal to infinity that is your case here and this is w of h divided by kbt going to 0 and this region here is where w of h divided by kbt goes as minus p times v overlap okay so that is uh, I mean this is this is actually for uh, depletion interaction between two hard spheres okay okay so this particular um, concept of um, uh, you know depletion interaction okay was actually th these expression that we see here this is actually first proposed by uh, two scientists um, uh, Asakura and Osawa okay that is it's also called as AO potential okay the, your, the depletion potential okay it's also called as AO potential that is because of the people who you know gave this concept of depletion interactions and things like that okay so that is about um, um, depletion you know uh, attraction okay or depletion interaction uh, 